Hi everybody and welcome to this dose of Dr. E and Dr. P on diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA. So why are we talking about this? It's unfortunately still common in people with diabetes, especially type 1. It can be life-threatening. So real quick, what is DKA? Well, really it comes from when your body doesn't have enough insulin. And when you don't have insulin, you start burning fat, and that fat can turn into ketones, which can be an okay thing until you make too many of these ketones. They're acids, they make you acidotic, and they, they actually can kill you. Being acidotic means your blood is not in the right range, and that bays every organ in your body. And unfortunately, um, you can die from diabetic ketoacidosis. Fortunately, it doesn't happen very often. And our little video today is going to help you pick it up early and treat it. Right. But it still happens in about 5% of type 1s every year go to the ER or the hospital with DKA. So it's more common than it should be. And I think people always think, oh, that just happens to the kind of bad diabetics. It's not my problem. It's not going to happen to me. Steve and I were both just telling stories about when we went into DKA um, and had to treat it. So it can happen to kind of anybody. Yeah. And the sooner you pick it up yourself, it can avoid a visit to the emergency room or to the intensive care unit. Mm -hmm. And what are the most common situations? Well, I'd say for most of us, remember when we first diagnosed. Yeah. Second of all, if we wear pumps, like we just mentioned, the line comes out, my Omnipod falls off, it happens. And you gotta be prepared for that. Uh, and then also when, you, when you're sick, a lot of people need more insulin when they're sick, even if they're not eating. And then there's a, a class of medications called SGLT inhibitors. They are important medications, uh, especially for approved for type 2, but they're eventually going to be approved for type 1 for heart and kidneys. And those can cause a condition called euglycemic DK, something that we spoke about quite in depth on our podcast on this topic. Yeah. So what are the symptoms of DK? We have a little graphic here. Um, really, you just feel lousy. You know, it starts with like muscle aches, cramps, um, really tired, uh, really thirsty, dry mouth, you know, peeing all the time. And then when it becomes really problematic is when you get really nauseous and actually start to vomit is always a time that you need to go to the emergency room yeah. if that happens. I like to bring up the point. It doesn't feel like a high blood sugar mm -hmm. after eating too much. You feel like you got the flu. Right. And whether your blood sugar is high or not, you need to test your blood for a certain you know, chemical called beta-hydroxybutyrate that picks up diabetic ketoacidosis. Currently, it's not available in a urine test strip. It might be someday, but they do have meters. Right. So how do you know if you're in DKA? How do you know what your ketone levels are? Well, here's a picture of an actual meter. And if you're thinking, gosh, that looks like a blood sugar meter. Well, it actually is. It's a blood sugar meter. They have strips that, you know, one type of strip that measures your glucose, another strip that actually measures your ketones. So this is something that everybody should probably have, to be honest, around. Um, and the, the, the meter itself is probably like 20 bucks. The strips can be a little expensive, but you might only need 10 to last your whole life, potentially. Uh, so. The expiration on those, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> but just for people to look in the future, Abbott is coming out with a continuous ketone monitor mm -hmm. that might be combined with our CGM. Right. But that's in the future. So that would be awesome, right? You know, you wear your CGM already, and now they're working on things that will simultaneously measure your ketones, too. So um, how do we treat it? Okay. So uh, first of all, get this meter, check your ketones. You can listen to our podcast and look online on what normal levels are and when you're in the ketotic range. So as soon as you say, okay, my blood sugar's been high. I've got these symptoms. My ketones are high. I know I'm in DK. I'm not throwing up yet, so I don't have to go to the emergency room. So what can I do? And the real pillars here are starting with insulin and fluids. So when it comes to insulin, if you're on a pump, assume that it's not working. Change your infusion set um, and give yourself some insulin, but importantly through a syringe or a pen so you know that you're getting it. There's no doubt of is it leaking or anything like that. And you need a big slug, somewhere between 7 to 10 units for an adult. Um, this is much more than what your pump's going to be telling you, 0.6 oh, units to correct. Your pump doesn't know you're going in DK. Yeah, so you've got to give it your a high amount of insulin to kind of bring you back down into range. Would you say a double rage bolus? A double rage bolus, whatever you want to call you won't, it. You won't get low, we yeah. promise you. 
uh, and drink a lot of fluids. And it's really good to get ones with electrolytes like zero calorie Gatorade, mm -hmm. for example. And kind of like insulin, it's hard to overdo it. Drinking two, three of these Gatorade bottles initially, and then maybe a couple every hour or so, it helps flush the ketones out. I say the insulin stops you making new ketones, and the fluids help get rid of the ones that are already in your system. And if you do those two things, most of the time you can bring yourself back into a normal range. Yeah, I'll add one more thing. A lot of, a lot of doctors feel that taking 30 grams of carbohydrate cuts off the brain's drive to produce ketones because there's not enough insulin around. It's not getting any energy. And that will also help you uh, avoid getting a serious DKA. Mm -hmm. So, and then once you treat yourself and you can check your ketones, hopefully again, to see that they're coming back into a normal range, but you kind of can get back like back to your business. You yeah. know, put your, like, like I said, change your infusion set, make sure you've taken your basil and you should be kind of, you know, good to go. Yeah, and there's a range here. Many of us have been in ketosis where, you know, you may have missed your insulin dose, may have, your pump may have fallen out for a short period of time, but the end stage part of that is diabetic ketoacidosis. Mm. That's what we're trying to avoid. And this is a critical thing, this education that everybody living with diabetes should know how to, how to manage, how to recognize, how to treat, to keep you safe and keep you confident that you can manage your diabetes, even in these crappy kind of crazy situations. So last thing I want to say is we want to thank, uh, special thanks to Lexicon for sponsoring this particular dose of Dr. E and P. So thanks everybody. And we'll see you at the next one.